So as as a child, were you aware of like how big your dad was in the game of football? I remember being probably about nine or ten, actually. And I went to a Rod Stewart concert with my mum and dad in Glasgow <laughs> at Ibrox. <laughs> and, um, because, because I was a really cool nine-year-old. Um, and we went to see Rod Stewart and people were sort of shouting at him from the crowd. We walked around the inside of the pitch to get to our seats. Although I was kind of aware of, um, of what he did, it wasn't really that big a deal to me. And then suddenly I went, oh, other people are interested. This is, this is really strange. Mm-hmm. Because I spent a lot of time around the club. And so it's a bit like my dad plays football. Yeah, well, so does mine. Yeah, which sure, point? Yeah. <laughs> so in terms of like going to, going to new environments, I suppose that would be one way of putting it. So say being the first female um, host on Talk Sport Radio. Did, you, did it seem like a big deal to you being the first woman or was it just getting on the radio? Yeah, I can't remember if I knew that I was the first woman to do it. And I think it's because because of that background in Sky Sports News, I did that for, for nine years. And I think Talk Sport was the first thing I did that wasn't Sky, that was outside of that. So it felt like a big deal to me. It wasn't, I wasn't thinking, I'm, I'm, this is it now, I'm coming in as the, as the first woman yeah. to do this. It just wasn't something that I, it, it didn't occur to me. I think luckily it's a thing that's changing a lot more. And I think James and I were kind of, I don't know, because like when we were growing up, like Anne Mark, she was, she was, like a really really hard working woman and never and she, like her, her her position what she she got to in work was a very senior one and i think we've always had that example of there's no women men i, I was thinking my mum's example is just a case of right that's what i'm good at and i'm going to do it and it's only really years afterwards that i she told me like of stuff she came up against you know of people like she, there was this one uh, this one employer or one guy who worked under her who it came to her attention and had been sending emails, not very nice about her type of thing. And uh, she called her into his office, uh, called, called wow. this, this person into her, into her office and said, can you just read this email to me, please? And, uh, you know, stuff like and that. But that's, that's how she dealt with people, you know. It was very much a case of... That's yeah. amazing. And so to, to me, the whole empowering women in TV, in positions and stuff like that, I suppose to, to a one degree, we've kind of been... Obviously, being male anyway, we don't see that point of view to begin with. But also having that example from my mum is very much a case of there is always an opportunity there to go and get it type of thing. Growing up in a football world, I never had that sense of not belonging that I think a lot of women talk about, that sense of trying to fight to get on the inside mm. because I'd grown up in it. And whether whether people treated me or thought of me as being on the inside, it never... It, it, it just didn't occur to me that I wasn't. So I think I didn't have to get over that. That was an obstacle I didn't have to get over. I think I had a sort of naivety about things where I just didn't, I just didn't see mm. it. I'm, I'm fairly sure there were instances, but I, I just didn't see them because I was a little bit kind of oblivious to the whole thing. I just kind of got my head down and, and did my job. Some of the experience that other women have talked about, I find genuinely shocking mm. that, you know, because I know that I know now that my experience wasn't typical and lots of women found it very difficult. But I think with me, it was, there, was a, um, there was that, that sense of it being a world I was really comfortable in, but also just not noticing stuff. And I think that really helped me. I think if I'd paid attention, it maybe would have knocked me a lot more. I mean, it's still, it's still shocking that here we are so, um, this year. Still, and it's yeah. it's still a thing. Like it is, it is, it is absolutely yeah. ludicrous. Um, but I mean, cause we've got we've got fortunately lots of um, female listeners who who get in touch. So hopefully they're they're listening to this thinking, and, and maybe they've maybe they've come across people who have been like, oh, you, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a woman. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, oh yeah. right, so you do, you do. Yeah. do. <laughs> and I think, but I think you'll I think you'll get that. And I think lots of people want to know, you know, how how do you deal with online abuse or how do you deal with sexism or and i think i think because of what we were talking about earlier with with the way things are in in terms of how people talk about people who are on the television you will get abuse and it and if you are male or female you will you will get abuse but if you're female there will be an extra layer to it which is there will be sexist abuse in there and really there's there's not an awful lot you can do about it because it will always it will always affect you but it shouldn't affect what you do mm. you can you can only control what you do and how you do your job 
there's nothing you can do about it. But I think trying to pretend it doesn't bother you is, is a waste of time. That's just exhausting. It's just, it's not, it's not a good use of your energy. But it, it's normal to feel affected by it. But as long as you put all your energy into not letting it affect what you do and how you do your job and how you perceive yourself, then I think that's the, that's the only way, really, that you can, you can deal with it. Mm. Don't get ready to make me.